Okay, uh, welcome to the World Heritage uh, videos. This is the first in a series of short uh, videos on World Heritage sites, uh, which for Year 7 will help you in your assessment task. Just below here, this here is a map of uh, all the World Heritage sites. You can see there, there's a range of different colours, the yellow, the green, there's diamonds, there's also a few red ones. Um, we'll go through what all of those mean a bit later through the presentation. Probably the first thing we need to deal with is, is what is heritage and then what is world heritage. Heritage refers to uh, a site of, of, uh, that, w that humans have placed, uh, I guess, some value upon. Um, it will reflect something of our past with, uh, and, and generally some, some beauty. Uh, um, so then world heritage is something that's of global importance. One of the questions that comes up a lot is sort of something like this here. You know, people and students will often say, you know, oh, there's that house down the road that's, that's heritage listed or our house is heritage listed. Um, is that world heritage? And it's really important to know that uh, in Australia, certainly, we've got a range of different heritage listings, um, but more than likely, um, unless you that house down the road is the Opera House, um, that house down the road is probably unlikely to be uh, World Heritage listed. Um, and I will go into the next slide and have a look at the different uh, sort of heritage listings. So this is an Australian Government page, this is uh, one of the, this is on the environment.gov, you can go to that website if you want. Um, but basically this goes down and talks to you about the different types of heritage listing in Australia and the World Heritage List that you can see there, that's the one that we're most in, in, uh, interested in today. Um, but there's the National Heritage List, the Commonwealth Heritage List, um, list of overseas places. Um, and then down here, this is the one that most people often think about when they're thinking about uh, their, their, their houses in their street or, or a local a local park or a cemetery or a, or a major building and that's in that state, territory and local sites and they're, they're definitely, uh, they, they hold a great value for the local area but, but certainly not unlikely to have value on a global stage um, and so it's really that global importance that we're looking at. Um, which brings us to the, the sort of one of the definitions or the or or a statement that really encapsulates world heritage, and I've taken this off the UNESCO page. Um, both the montage here down the bottom, this montage which I really like, uh, which covers a whole range of world heritage sites, and also the the statement, it's a legacy from our past that we live with today. It's what we pass on to our future. It's cultural and it's natural. It's irreplaceable, and places of unique and diverse. I think they did that, that those words, they really capture what world heritage is. Um, and probably if you start to read that and really think about it, 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 it gives you an idea of how rare some of the places that we're going to be looking at are and how unique and diverse they are. Now, probably when you're looking at world heritage, the site that you need to be aware of is the UNESCO site. Um, UNESCO uh, is a global, a global arm of the United Nations that uh, looks after educational, scientific and cultural um, arms of, of uh, globally, so they certainly look at world heritage. This is the list in 2014. What you can see here, there's just under a thousand world heritage sites, 981 of those. There are 29 that exist across boundaries of countries. Two have been delisted. There are 44 in danger, 759 cultural or man-made, 193 natural, so physical uh, um, sites, and then 29 mixed. It's interesting when we look at those 29 mixed because Australia has quite a few of those. We'll have a quick look at, um, at Australia's cultural, natural and mixed sites right now. So here's our cultural sites. Globally, there's, as we said, 759 cultural sites. And down here you can see, this is just straight off UNESCO's website. So the Royal Exhibition Buildings in Carlton Gardens, 
Sydney Opera House, which is probably the one that most most of us in Sydney are aware of, and the Australian convict sites. And there's a few of these. Um, they've been clustered into one World Heritage site, but there's a few of those, and if you're interested, you can click on their website and have a look at whereabouts those are. The natural sites, interestingly, there's a, there's less natural sites, only 193. We can look at sort of, you know, we can sort of think about at the end of the presentation why there's uh, more cultural than, than natural sites. There's a few reasons for it, but you can see here, and probably unsurprisingly, Australia's got a lot more uh, natural sites. We're a very unique country, we're a very large country, and we've got a range of environments that are unique and, and don't exist anywhere else around the world. So it's unsurprising, I think, that we do have more, um, that we do dominate there in the in the natural sites. When we talk about natural, you have a look, you know, we're talking about physical environments, so the Barrier Reef, Lord Howe Island, rainforests, the tro wet tropics, Shark Bay, Fraser Island, M McDonald, Heard Island, Macquarie Island, and Blue Mountains, which is one that, especially in Sydney, we're probably aware of, uh, and then Ningaloo Coast. The last one that we talk about is a mixed site. There's only 29 of them globally, and in Australia we have four. When we talk about mixed sites, we're talking about a site that has both cultural and natural uh, heritage. And the reason why in Australia we have so many is because of our indigenous, uh, our indigenous legacy, that sites like Kakadu, Willandra, the Tasmanian wilderness and Uluru have exceptional natural beauty but they also hold a great deal of cultural beauty through dreaming stories of the indigenous um, of the indigenous people of our land, and so that's why Australia has such a um, such a high proportion there of of mixed sites. So just I guess a few questions then: Why would Australia have more natural sites and very few cultural sites? Well, this probably is firstly a reflection of our history as a nation, um, being only colonised in um, by Europeans in 1788 um, when we're comparing ourselves to countries like uh, to European countries which have significantly more cultural sites such as France, Spain, Italy um, we're a very young country and and so it's hard for us to get that uniqueness in such a short period of time um, as well globally there's far more uh, there's far more so it reflects the criteria as well and then that mixed sites um, Oh, sorry, the reflection of the criteria, I think we're talking about the natural. We've got far more, and I said it in this last slide, we've got far more natural sites that are unique um, just basically due to our, our spatial geography. Um, so that's reflected in the criteria. And then the mixed sites, as I said, I think that gives us that, that highlights that link that Indigenous people had with country. So it's that they're places of extreme natural beauty but also have a strong link with the dreaming. It's really important that you understand the selection criteria. The selection criteria has been changed recently. It used to be broken into two parts, a selection criteria for natural and a selection criteria for cultural. It's now just been broken into one um, and there's ten criteria. A site only has to, f uh, doesn't have to fit all ten. It just has to fit one um, and often two pieces. You can have a look at Number one, it represents a masterpiece of human creative genius. Um, often that's going to be something there that obviously is, is going to relate to a cultural site. And I'm pretty sure that one there relates to, is used to uh, as selection criteria for the Opera House. Uh, the other ones that you, know, you might look at uh, if we think about a natural site is this one down here, number seven. It's a natural, uh, natural phenomena exceptional natural beauty and aesthetic importance. Um, so a lot of our sites in Australia fit that one uh, naturally and then that one there for our, our cultural sites. Um, but it's really important that you have a look at the selection criteria, especially for the assessment tasks coming up. I've put on here our Opera House, which is one of our cultural sites, and also put down here the criteria in which it was selected, um, which was the number one, the first one there. You'll need to, in your own time, go and have a look at the UNESCO site and have a look at the the uh, different listings and and the selection criteria. Here as well as the Blue Mountains. 
you can have a look. There's two selection criteria there. And, I mean, if you have a look and you read them, it's in a site of outstanding diversity and habitat. It talks about the beauty of the landscape as well. Um, and so there's that selection criteria. And once again, be encouraged that you go and have a look individually at those. Okay, as an overview, I think the thing is that we need to be aware of is that we, we have differentiated between what is heritage uh, in terms of what is local, state, national, and then what is world heritage. Then we understand that world heritage has uh, 10 selection criteria. Uh, that there is about a thousand sites around the world. That Australia, we have, you know, just around, just under 20 sites. Um, that they are cultural, natural, and mixed. As I said, this is the first video um, in a set of videos on world heritage that I'll post. The next one will be a bit more focused on your assessment task and what you're going to be required to do. But you'll certainly need to have a look at this, you know, have reviewed what went on in this video. Have a look at the UNESCO site, which you can go back and find the, um, the address for in the presentation. Um, and, just become, and just make yourself aware of, uh, of some of the details on the site itself. Okay, thanks a lot. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye.